We're back. We're talking with Herb Alpert and his involvement with Janet Jackson and Jimmy and Terry and Tijuana Brass. What, whatever happened to the Tijuana Brass? I give what? <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. I know. Yeah. But I mean, when, when was the last time you recorded with Tijuana Brass? Oh, it was uh, back in 1974. Yeah. Okay. I had the second herd then. We disbanded in 1969. Mm -hmm. And then I took a short uh, break. And then I had a, a chance to play for the Queen of England on a command performance in 1974, and I got the group back together. We played for about a year and a half, mm -hmm. and then uh, it was time to say goodbye. Yeah. So you got the band back together for this command performance, and then right. you signed to record again? Well, I, I did one album with them called uh, Coney Island, mm -hmm. and then uh, played in Las Vegas for a week, and it felt like three months. <laughs> 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 and then I decided that that was it. I wanted to be solo. Oh, really? Why? Well, I just wanted to go off in a, a little different direction. People, you know, kept expecting me to do the Tijuana Brass music, you know, Taste of Honey Sideways, and uh, I, yeah. I, I didn't feel like doing that. W what year did you actually get together or start performing on a record? Uh, well, there was, uh, the records came a couple years before the group. The group started in 1965, actually, mm -hmm. after uh, Whipped Cream and Other Delights, after the Taste of Honey record. Oh, really? Yeah. So since yeah. 63, now I'm trying to add all this up. Well, 62, A&M started, just to put a little perspective here, uh -huh. A&M started in my garage, uh, along with my partner, Jerry Moss, in 1962. And uh, The Lonely Bull was the first record we released. That was A&M 701. And it was Jerry's idea. I said, why, should, why, should we, why don't we start with number one, or, uh -huh. or 101? He said, no, let's start with 701, so everyone will think we've had 700 <laughs> records out there prior to this. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, so was this a dream of yours or Jerry's, the record company? Where did this idea Not come? really. It just started to grow organically. Um, we put out one record, and then with that money, we invested in another record, and uh, little by little, things started happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so was it a means to put out your own records? I mean, you know, you as an artist? Is that the way it started, or did you really perceive it as being this major record company that it was to become? Well, uh, Donnie, you know, in those days, it was so much different. I mean, there were a lot of little record companies are operating out of the trunks of their car, mm -hmm. and uh, it was much easier to get records played. You could just go to a radio station if you uh, uh, had a master, and if the program director happened to like the record, they'd play it. They might put it on the air that afternoon or a day later, mm -hmm. so it was a whole different... Uh, uh, way of uh, being in the record business and mm -hmm. one thing just led to another we had no great master plan to have be a major independent company we just uh, took it little by little we tried to put out great records we thought of ourselves as a little boutique and uh, we tried to put out records that we would go into the store to buy ourselves mm -hmm. yeah so when did it become this major or when did you realize it was becoming this major record company Last week. No, oh, come on. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, it got a little out of hand <laughs> when I realized I didn't, I didn't know everybody's name <laughs> that worked at the company. Because yeah. with the two of us, uh, you know, in, in 62, uh, and then there, was, there were three in 63, and four, 10, 12, uh, you know, 50, 80, 100, to now, you know, 500. It, there was a point there when I just realized, you know, I'd pass somebody on the lot and say hi, and I didn't really re realize whether they were working there or not. <laughs> so it was, I guess, around 1968, 69, in that period. Yeah. Uh, did you participate in all of the signings of all of the artists on your label? No. We have a real wonderful A&R staff, mm -hmm. and um, I sign some of the artists. My partner does as well. and. Uh, um, it ha happens different ways. I I'm involved with the, the overall brushstroke you know, mm -hmm. of the company. I, I like to think that I represent the artist's point of view. I stand up for the artist's rights, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but is that ever difficult? I mean, when you're pl playing both sides. I mean, you're an artist yourself, but you're also owner. Well, you know, I live out of the, 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 the right side of my brain a lot. I'm an artist, and I, I think like an artist. I feel an artist. Uh, and it's hard for me to you know, really think business and think money and think numbers. And it's, it's, I get a little confused and I get yeah. quite tired doing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do it, you know, just as the overall, you know, looking at the overall picture of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, on occasions, I will, you know, zero in on some 
if we have a particular problem i will yeah. try to you know think about it in those terms but for the most part i try to remain an artist i want to that's where i have my most fun yeah. i read recently that uh, you guys are that there's a deal to sell a and m records after all these years well you know that there have been rumors since 1967 the, the nice part of the rumors <coughs> The price keeps going up. <laughs> yeah. Well, the figure I saw was three hundred and fifty million. Oh, for, ooh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, we we are negotiating, but it's uh, there's a little ways to go before uh, there'll be any really uh, confirmed news about it. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you feel about that? I mean, is this something that? Well, it's like a good news, bad news story. On one hand, I feel very sad because uh, you know I think about that garage, I think about that windowless garage, you know, yeah. and. Um, it's hard to let go. It's like a kid. It's like somebody uh, that's very close to me. But um, at the same time, if it did happen, uh, I know it'd be for the best, and it would uh, only make us a bigger, stronger company and more creative company. Why would it be for the best? I mean, it's, is it because you have taken the company as far as you can? Yeah, uh, I think so. It's, it's pretty tough to compete out there with the big boys, the Columbias and the Wias. You know, they have this big slush fund, and we've we've take pri we've taken pride in never having. We've never bought the big artists. We never laid down the big bucks to, you know, uh, acquiesce to the, you know, the crazy demands that are out there with mm -hmm. some artists and, and managers. So that would just give us a little more muscle, a little more, you know, uh, openness to that. Yeah. So would you still be involved even? Oh, absolutely. The yeah. If if it would happen, like I said, it's really not mm -hmm. uh, confirmed yet at all. But uh, what they would be uh, purchasing is uh, the company as it exists. You know. Mm -hmm. that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, best of luck, however Thanks. it goes down. Thanks. It's, uh, we got to take a commercial break right now. We'll be back to talk more with Herb Alford. I, I couldn't imagine that.